another interesting visitation took place near Mexico City in 1531. According to the story, an Indian peasant Juan Diego was on his way to a church on December the 9th, 1531. When he reached the crest of the mountain, Tepeyekek, he saw an apparition of a luminous young girl. She told him in his native language that she was the mother of God and wanted a temple built on that very spot. After unsuccessfully trying to convince the local Franciscan bishop of what he had seen and heard, the apparition appeared to Juan Diego again on December the 12th in the same spot. She told him to take his cloak and gather out of season flowers that had miraculously appeared there and take them to the bishop. When he arrived at the bishop's residence, he opened his cloak to show the flowers to the bishop and his servants, but the flowers tumbled to the ground and revealed an image of the young woman imprinted on the cloak. She is pictured standing on a crescent moon, supported by an angel and surrounded by roses with the sun's rays clothing her in light. She wears a black band around her ribs, which is the traditional sign of being pregnant. Stars cover her dress and cloak. The cloak with the image can be seen at the Basilica of Our Lady of Guadalupe in Mexico City. After almost 400 years, the cloth has not deteriorated, neither has the image. Art experts and scientists from many disciplines have been unable to explain how the image was formed on the cloth. This is very similar in some ways to the famous Shroud of Turin. Science has so far been unable to explain how the image came to be on the shroud. Catholics and some Protestants believe both images to be miraculous signs from God and kneel before them hoping to gain favour from the God who commanded them not to do the very thing they are doing. God clearly states in the Bible, in Exodus 20, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. I must ask, did God mean what he said? Or did he actually mean that he can make images we worship before or venerate, but we must not create them? It's a kind of do as I say, but not do as I do. Does that sound like the God of the Bible? Well, actually, no, it doesn't sound like it at all. So we are left with one conclusion. The images were not from heaven, but are a deception. I am sure there are many who are sincere in their support of both these images, but sincerity is not enough. Even scientific proof that they were not created by human hands is not enough. What is needed is a word from God in his word that says we are permitted to bow before these images. But when we seek for such a word of acceptance in the Bible, it simply isn't there. Every image that appears in the Bible is condemned by God. Has he changed or have we? Some would say the images in the tabernacle, the images of the cherubim, were images God had said to create. But they worshipped them. The people never bowed down in front of them. They were ornamental, they were figurative, they were decorative. There was nothing to do with a religious icon that you bowed before and prayed to. And remember, these images are supported by and held by the worst example of Christianity on earth, supported by and endorsed by a religion that has its origins in Babylon in worship of the pagan sun god and the queen of heaven. How can any Bible-believing person accept these are from God? Yet the image in Guadalupe has 10 million visitors every year. Some even approach the image on their knees in hope of gaining favour for their prayers. The Shroud of Turin is not on general display, so when it was exhibited in 2010, it was viewed by 2 million people over a period of just 44 days. 
Interestingly, in 1531, the Lady of Guadalupe appeared on the mountain known as Tapayac, which is where the Aztecs worshipped the creator goddess, who gave birth to the sun god. Do you see the link? Even today, the indigenous people of the area visit the shrine and pray to Mary and to the goddess Tonantzin. They count them as one and the same person. Experts studying the image on the Guadalupe cloth have discovered a star chart showing the Southern Cross, Ursa Major and other constellations. Incredibly, the star chart shows the position of the constellations as they appeared above Mexico on December the 12th, 1531, the day the image first appeared on the cloak of Juan Diego. But what is of particular interest to us is the constellation at the feet of the image. It is the constellation of Orion. Here is the supposed Queen of Heaven positioning herself on the very constellation that represents her husband, the Sun God, worshipped in ancient Egypt and Babylon in connection with the Sun God Osiris and Nimrod. And people believe this is from God? Also, the pagans in Babylon and other cultures believed the gods rode across the skies in vehicles way beyond the technology of the time. So, when we are faced with the visitations from beings claiming to be angels or the Roman Catholic version of the Virgin Mary, accompanied by globes or discs of light, we are probably seeing nothing more than a modern version of fallen angels masquerading as messengers from God, when in reality they are extremely dangerous messengers of deception. In light of this, it should come as no surprise to discover the Vatican has been monitoring the UFO phenomenon for at least the last 300 years. The Vatican's interest in alien life and UFOs is well known to researchers. In fact, President Jimmy Carter, who himself witnessed a UFO sighting, was very interested in the phenomenon. While in office as President of the United States, Carter personally requested permission from the Vatican to read their files on UFOs with the understanding the files would be read by no one else but him. He sent the request to the Vatican twice and was refused access both times. So what information does the Vatican possess that it doesn't want to disclose to the world, not even in private? to an American president. The Vatican has recently gone so far as to openly declare it now believes in alien intelligences. Many top Catholic theologians and astronomers like the Reverend Jose Funes of the Vatican Observatory on Mount Graham in Arizona believe not only is it okay for Catholics to believe in alien visitors from other worlds, but should we ever come into contact with them, we should treat them as brothers. Interestingly, the telescope Reverend Funes oversees has been named Lucifer by the Vatican. Also, Monsignor Corrado Balducci, a theologian and member of the Vatican governing body the Curia, and an insider close to the Pope, has gone on Italian national television to proclaim that extraterrestrial contact is a real phenomenon. Indeed, he suggests they are probably more evolved and more spiritual than humankind because they probably didn't sin like Adam and Eve and are therefore better able to communicate the truth of the gospel to us. He then astonished his listeners by stating, Perhaps it is not so far-fetched to see the second person of the Trinity, that is Jesus, not only as the Son of Man, but also as a child of other races. In other words, he's suggesting the Lord Jesus Christ himself may be a kind of alien being. Were the Vatican to welcome a personage from one of these craft who preached this kind of message, the world would readily accept it as true, having been fed a steady diet of space movies and TV series over the years. The collective mind is now ready and prepared to receive an alien saviour. To make it even more palatable, Pope Francis I announced in May 2013 that even atheists who do good works may enter heaven. 
one doesn't need to repent, believe in the atoning work of Jesus Christ on the cross, or in fact anything. The Catholic Church's gospel is evolving into a one-size-fits-all religion. Atheist, Buddhist, Muslim, no faith at all, whatever you are, the door is open to all, providing, of course, you do not state Jesus Christ is the only way of salvation. Monsignor Balducci even went so far a few years ago to suggest that aliens were already interacting with Earth and that some of the Vatican's leaders are aware of it. Astronaut Gordon Cooper seemed to back this statement when some years ago he was asked about his own UFO sighting. Cooper said, You want to know about UFOs and little green men? Contact the Vatican. They have an observatory out in Arizona and that's what they are looking for. However, there is no hard proof the pilots of the so-called flying saucers originate from this galaxy or from any other. In fact, researchers with decades of experience behind them suggest the craft are interdimensional, that is, they do not belong in our dimension at all, but begin their journey from somewhere else, a completely different dimension altogether from our own. Here you see Jacques Vallée, J. Allen Hynek and John Keel. Jacques Vallée is an astronomer and writer. J. Allen Hynek is a scientist who was an advisor to the American Air Force over UFOs. John Keel is a UFO researcher. If you saw the Spielberg's Close Encounters movie, the French scientist in the movie was actually based on Dr. Jacques Vallée. In the final scenes of the movie, when the alien craft lands, so respected in his field of research was Dr. Hynek that he was invited onto the movie set by Spielberg to play a cameo role among the actors playing the parts of scientists and technicians waiting to greet the aliens when they landed. Yet, regardless of the Vatican's belief that whoever or whatever pilots the UFOs is a morally advanced friendly space brother, Dr. Vallée, Dr. Hynek and John Keel all suggests they are from another dimension and possibly demonic. And these are not Christian as far as I know. This object appeared in 2011 above the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. Supposing something like this actually landed on the Temple Mount or the Mount of Olives and the occupant stepped out claiming to have been sent by the same God as the Jews and the Muslims and the Christians and he was in fact the God of all men. What would people's reaction be? To many it would be totally acceptable, absolutely believable. Any who cling to their own faith rather than the new cosmic understanding would be branded fools, anti-world peace possible terrorists out to destroy the new age of peace and brotherly love the world was entering into. Thanks to our space brothers and the apostate false religious leaders, any who will not follow the march toward the new world order will need to be taken out of the way to prevent them from influencing others with their archaic belief system. That is, whether it's an alien entity that arrives or something else, if you do not go along with the world government, world planned religion, the new spirituality, you will either be reprogrammed or you will disappear. Just a few years ago, this image appeared over the Ivory Coast in Africa. To those who witnessed it, the person was none other than the Virgin Mary. Is this the Virgin Mary or a demon? Or is it the product of wicked men preparing us for the great deception in which, with the influence of demonic beings, images appear in the sky purporting to be spiritual icons from all the main religions. Who better to represent the coming apostate demonic world religion than an entity such as Mary, accepted and revered around the world as she pleads for all people to come together under the leadership of the Vatican and our benevolent space brothers, who under the new world political leader and his assistant, the leader of the new world religion, are set to lead us into an age of peace, brotherhood and tolerance for everyone. Apart, that is, from those who cling to the one God of the Bible and his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and anyone else who refuses to fall for the demonic lie.